ground bait is really effective in sort of like two, two and a half foot of water. So if I've got that sort of depth down my margins, I like to feed ground bait. It's a great attractor. The one I've chosen today is the pole mix. I use this for probably 90% of my fishing. F1s and carp, doesn't matter. It's got everything we need in the ground bait to attract them fish. There's just a few little tips that I can give you to try and help you put more fish in the net. Pole mix, commercial masters range. It's a, a mix that sort of we designed three or four years ago. We've had loads of brilliant feedback from it. This ground bait is very versatile. You can make it claggy, you can have it a little bit drier, um, you can add particles to it such as micro pellets, etc. to show you how are the target F1s using it and our target carp using it and see how it differs from one to the other. A couple of things that always confuse people with ground bait in the edge is how they would go about fishing for F1s, how they go about fishing for carp. So first of all let me show you how I prepare the bait because it's quite simple. I've got some micro pellets here, these are our 2.3 mil carp pellets so these ones they're not very high in oil and preparation wise couldn't be easier so i've got some water here all i'm going to do cover them in water just so the pellets are just popping through that water give them a little shake make sure they're all sinking just turn them over with your fingers and there's just enough water in there if i feel like there's slightly too much i'll just tip out a little bit of water until them pellets are just popping through the surface and then all i'll do is i'll leave them to absorb that water will end up nice and soft and nice and spongy throughout. Now when it comes to preparing the ground bait itself, I've got a kilo bag here. So I'm going to take a kilo straight into the bucket and then water wise, I've got a tub here with water. I've got a three pint bait tub that's just sort of filled to that sort of rim that you get just underneath it. So I'd say about three pint of water. I'm going to give that about two pint to start with save a pint back there give it a little twirl just get it going round and at this point it just gets it moving starts to soak it all up i know now it'll take another pint quite easily so if you're a little bit worried so that's took three pints of water if you're a little bit worried don't chuck it all in once you can do it bit by bit but obviously i've got the experience i've used this quite a bit i know it'll take three pints again just move it round and then get your hand in and just start to spread that water around the ground bait and at this point now you'll think jesus christ i've messed it up you haven't messed it up it'll be really sloppy like that that's exactly how you want it because what that's going to do is make sure that every individual little bit of pellet so i'm just distributing that water around and you're going to be left with that sort of mess so it's just a big sloppy ball all them pellets are going to absorb that absorb that water and then give that five or ten minutes let it take it all on then I'll pass it through the riddle. So that's ground bait and pellets prepared, so let's just stick them out of the way. Now, when it comes to F1 fishing, what you'll find, a lot of people don't know how to feed it. Now, F1s don't like massive volumes of bait, so kinder pot in your bait, here you'll see I've got my large paste pot, I've got a large Guru normal pot, a medium, and then I've got a cut down medium as well. So it's just a medium pot, a little bit cut off it just so it's sort of like half the size again i'm a massive believer in volumes of bait so if i have a cupping kit like this your standard big cupping kit what you'll tend to find is this is 100 mil the paste pot is 50 mil so it's half the amount of that what i'm trying to work out when i'm feeding in the edge is how much bait i need to feed every single chuck so if i'm big carp fishing what i like to do is feed bigger volumes of bait so on the day, I might want to fill this up with 100 mil of ground bait. The problem with ground bait is the fish come in, they root for it, and ground bait doesn't fill the fish up. So they're rooting for something that's not actually there. It's almost like soup to them. You need some bait in there. You need some food content in there. 
So if I'm big carp fishing, sometimes what I like to do is half fill that pot with ma maggots. So I've got some dead maggots here for carp fishing. I always find dead maggots are better for big carp because they don't move out your peg. They're a great holding bait. I'll talk about F1s in a minute, but carp fishing, maybe half pot of maggots, fill the rest up with ground bait, and then I've got my ground bait as my attractor, and I've got my dead maggots to sort of hold the fish and feed the fish. Ground bait doesn't really feed fish. Now, even though the, these are all pellet based, and the pole mix is like pellets and your fish meals and everything that the carp want to eat, it's very, very fine particle. So the root for the bait, some people think the gill feeding, they're not necessarily always gill feeding. What they're doing is they're trying to find bait. They can smell it, but they can't really pick anything out. So it holds them in your peg, but you have to have food content there to actually hold the fish and make them eat something. Now, you can see here, I've got a couple of tins of corn. I can substitute them maggots for corn. So if I wanted to, I could put half a pot of corn, half a pot of ground bait and feed it like that. When I've got a lot of fish in my peg, I might want to cut the particles back so they pick my hook bait up a little bit quicker. So on another day, you might put a third of a pot of corn and three quarters of a pot, uh, two thirds of a pot of ground bait. Likewise, you might do the same with maggot. You might go to some venues and meat works really well. And then you can substitute your maggots for meat and etc. etc. Whatever particle you think is best, like some venues you'll go, you'll feed dead maggots, you'll get mithered by lots of small fish. So corn or meat is a great alternative. When I'm F1 fishing, what I like to do is once this ground bait has took the water on, I mix it around and your ground bait should not go through your riddle really easily. So what I mean by that is when you're putting it through your riddle, you should have to push it through. So when you're pushing your ground bait through, you end up with these real damp particles and your ground bait will be like, I've just done a little bit there, your, your ground bait will be really heavy and it'll sink quicker. If you can riddle your ground bait and it just goes through your, your riddle, your ground bait's too dry. That's going to lead to more foul lookers and more liners. So try and get your ground bait nice and damp. Like I said, one kilo of ground bait will take three pints of water, water no problem. And then what I would like to do, if I was F1 fishing now, I would take a mixture of ground bait, so probably 50% ground bait, so let's say two little handfuls, two little handfuls of pellets, and when I mix this together now, what I'll end up with is a concoction, so I'll just put a little bit more ground bait in there, a concoction of like ground bait and micras mixed 50-50. So when I'm F1 fishing, that's a great way of getting the cloud from the ground bait, but also having some food content in there. You can also do this for carp, you know, you don't have to just do it for F1s, but for F1 fishing, I like to then feed that concoction of ground bait and micras, put it into my pole pot, I can feed that little blob, it'll go down, break up, there's loads of micras in there, and then whatever hook bait you want to fish over the top of it, you can do. So for me, I've got some live maggots here, live maggots are a great bait for putting on the hook, so I can put two, three, four maggots on the hook if I'm fishing for F1s, if I'm fishing for carp and I'm getting a mixture of carp and F1s, I can just feed micros and ground bait. I can put a piece of meat, a piece of corn, worm, you know, the world is your oyster. Put whatever you want over the top of it, as long as it's a standout bait. It's almost like the cherry on the cake, if you like. So your hook bait is the standout. I'm not feeding any, especially when I'm fishing for F1s. I don't feed any live maggots, don't feed any dead maggots. I just generally feed ground bait or micros. So I might go, 70% micros, 30% ground bait if the fishing's really good. If the fishing's not as good and I don't want as much food content in, content in there, I've got more ground bait, less micros, so maybe 70% ground bait, 30% micros. You can play about this on the day. You know, if I feel like the fishing's a little bit hard and there's fish in my peg but I'm not getting bites as quick, I can add more ground bait to that and dilute the micros a little bit. So there's two ways of fishing it, you know, Think about your pole, pole pot size. Generally, if you're carp fishing, I would say the large gear and the paste pot are your two main pots that you're gonna use if you're kinder potting for carp. If you're fishing for F1s, then you're generally gonna use your large and your medium. This little pot here, this cut down one, it's more of a pellet pot. If I'm feeding ground bait in this, it's very little ground bait that can go in it. And ground bait, because it's not very filling, that's not a lot of bait, it's not enough bait, so that is no good for ground bait fishing, it's too small of a pot. Fine if you're feeding micro pellets, but when it comes to ground bait, these are my go-to three pots. Medium, large and paste pot 
and then if I'm not getting the fish in my peg and I have to attract them, that's when that bigger volume comes in, especially for carp. Now, 100 mil, I like using this pot because 100 mil doesn't put the F1s off. They also do these in versions of 200 and 300 mil. If I'm fishing for big carp, six, 10 pound fish, then I might use a two and 300 mil pot. But for F1s, 300 mil of ground bait mixed with whatever particles you're putting in there, sometimes they can back away from it. F1s like little and often, carp prefer bigger volumes. So sometimes it's nice to have a line where it's a little bit shallower for the carp and you just target the carp in the shallower water and then slightly deeper water, you can do it regular and you're just fishing for bites off F1s. You still get an odd carp there, but generally the carp like to feed in that little bit shallower water. So it's all a bit venue dependent, depends what sort of ratio of fish are in the lake. If it's predominantly carp lake, you feed a little bit heavier, you might use a slightly bigger kinder pot. If it's more of an F1-y lake, little and often is going to be the best way to go about it. I would approach my F1 fishing. So, ground bait, micros in my feed. There's two ways you can actually feed it. You can feed it via a big pot if you're fishing longer down the edge. So here today, we're fishing about seven meters. It's too far to throw it comfortably. Now on some venues, what I like to do is have a bagging line or a line where I can catch fish a little bit closer, a little bit easier. And on that line, I might take a little ball of ground bait, gently squeeze it, and I might just throw it in down the edge. At four to five metres, that's fine, because you can throw it accurate enough to keep throwing little balls there regular. Check with fishery rules, because some places do ban it, but where allowed, that's a good way of feeding little and often, and that's what F1's like. This line further down, the way I would have to prime this line up before I go on it is via a big pot. So that 100 mil pot, 100 mil I feel is about as much as the F1's will take before it starts to put them off. So I'll be filling that up, maybe going in there, you know, in the height of summer, maybe every 20, 30 minutes, something like that, just so that there's some bait in the area. And then hopefully when the fish arrive, we can go in and we can start kinder potting over the top of it. So picking my rig up now, I'm fishing in about two foot of water. And obviously this is the only sort of style rig that I use. 0.4 of a gram bag of float, 017 main line. I've got a grey hydroelastic and then I've got a little bulk and a three inch hook length. So I'm going to Spear a few maggots onto this hook. I've got a 16's SLWG. I'm just hooking the maggots through the fin point and I can put three or four on. Depending how big your maggots are, if your maggots are quite big, three's normally fine, but if they're a little bit on the smaller side, just stick four on, because it's more of a visual thing. So now I've got like this little medusa of maggots, if you like, sort of like a little visual thing that the fish can home in on and pick up on. Now these are live maggots, for F1s I prefer live maggots, for bigger carp I'd probably use deads. And then I've got my little concoction here of micros and ground bait mixed together, 50-50. Like I said, the fishing gets really good, I can put more pellets in and less ground bait. If the fishing is not as good, I can go more ground bait. The ground bait is the attractor, that's what brings the fish in. So too much cloud can actually make it worse when you're catching lots of fish. So add more food content, i.e. micro pellets in this situation. And if we're not getting lots of fish in our peg, we don't want lots of food for them to eat either. We just want to attract them without feeding them. And that's why you go probably 70% ground bait, 30% micros. So today we're starting on a 50-50. We've got the little large guru pot. We'll just try and demonstrate how we go about it. So I ship to my mark. My marker is the end of this number five section here. So on the end of my number five, I line up with where I'm fishing, I turn my pot fully over, and I'm gonna place my bait gently onto the water. As soon as I get to the holes on my pot, I'll gently lift up, and my ground bait will just melt out my pot. My ground bait's nice and damp, nice and heavy, so that's gonna get your bait down as quickly as possible. This is where you don't want that dry ground bait. And we've been feeding this now, so hopefully there should be some fish down there. I've seen one little tiny swirl, so I know there has been fish coming to the peg on it. 
We haven't been in there long, little sign already. So my float's just moved a little bit to the right, so I'm just gonna draw it back onto my little spot. So try and keep your bait right on top of that pile of ground bait. The fish will home in on it. There'll be the cloud of the ground bait going down to draw them in. And then we've got some micro pellets to sort of hold them and keep them feeding in the peg. So again, a little bit of a liner there. I'm not gonna strike at anything that's sort of slow and moves slowly. Just looking for nice positive indication on my float. So I'm just gonna reset that rig, make sure I'm on top of where I fed. I've got a little back shot on, which I'm just gonna use here. Now, if my rig starts getting pushed to the right, this is quite common when you're fishing in that shallow water, your rig can get pushed about. A little indication there. It was a bit slow, probably shouldn't have struck at that, but it carried on going, so I did. So I'm just trying to keep it right on that spot. Now, if I don't get a bite within sort of three minutes, three and a half minutes maximum, I need to come back in and refeed again. But I know there's a fish there, and this is where having the right hook bait on is important. Now you can fish many hook baits over the ground bait. You're not limited to what you can fish. We're not feeding any. We're just feeding micros and ground bait. We're not feeding any particles such as maggots or corn or meat or anything like that. At the minute, I feel like maggots is probably our best hook bait, but there's nothing stopping me putting a piece of corn, a piece of meat, half a piece of worm, so again, another little liner. There's fish there, I'm just waiting for it to pick that hook bait up. That was a bit more of a cleaner bite. There's quite a lot of stocky fish in this lake, like smaller F1s, so some of them liners could be from them. Generally, as you fish it, sometimes your peg will get stronger. So at the minute, we've been putting some bait in, there's one. There's another fish there as well, just under that scum. Grey hydro's working nice, just keeping them under control. Like I say, it's one of these new stock fish. We're looking for them bigger F1s really, but that's a lovely fish. Little ghosty type mirror F1, absolutely immaculate. And this is why you need that little three inch hook length as well, because you're gonna get, when you fish with ground bait, it's a great attractor and it gets the fish into your peg, but you are gonna get your bait kicking up. That's all part of the attraction. It keeps the fish coming back. So you need to make sure your bait's pinned down. I had quite a lot of liners there, but I sort of waited and waited until I felt like I got that pro proper nice bite. Once I got that, I caught the fish. Beforehand though, if you strike at too many daft indications, you can end up foul looking them. Now, if you started having lots of problems with this, that's when you might potentially start coming into shallower water. When we start coming into shallower water, so at the minute we've got, say, two foot, you can potentially catch on ground bait in 12, 18 inches of water. So our next option here now, if we started getting lots and lots of signs, would be to come in against that bank. Now, when you come into the really shallow water, you've got more chance of catching them carp but you've probably got sometimes less chance of catching the F1s. They might not come that far up. So I'm gonna put this down, plumb up against the bank, and I'll run you through how I go about catching them bigger carp. <laughs> Imagine the situation, I'm fishing in sort of two and a half foot, two foot probably, getting an odd line or an odd sign. Some days when it's a little bit warmer, especially once the carp have spawned, maybe not this early in the year, but later on in the year, you can definitely come into that shallower water and try and target them bigger fish. Now, on a venue like this, it could be the bigger F1s and a few of the carp. On some venues, you might go straight into that shallow water and target just the big carp. Now, when it comes to what you feed and how you would feed it, here today, I've got to think, right, what's the best bait going to be? Is it going to be maggots? Is it going to be corn? Is it going to be meat? 
me personally, I know this is a maggot venue. There's a lot of, lot of fish where you can catch on maggots here. So I would probably go down the dead maggot route if I was fishing here and trying to target the carp. The volume of bait I feed is really important. These are going to be my go-to pots when I'm targeting carp. The large guru and the paste pot. Now, that one holds about 50 mil. That one probably holds about 30 mil. Now, what I've got to decide is, is 30 mil enough to keep them fish coming back? Probably not. You're going to have to big pot now and again and then kinder pot over the top of it. Some venues, the 50 mil paste pot will be enough to keep carp coming back in. So if you've got lots of fish in your peg, 50 mil is enough to keep them coming back sometimes. Today though, I'm going to try and catch some carp. I'm going to try and draw some fish in. So I'm going to go with my 100 mil. Some venues you might require 200, 300 mil. So try and work out that volume. 50 mil of maggots, capping that with some ground bait, and I'm gonna go and pot that in the edge. So I get to my marker, once I've got to my marker, and I think, right, that's where I wanna fish, place your pot on the water, turn it over, put your bait right where you want it to go. Now I've fed my peg, I don't actually need a pot on for this just now, I can actually go back in and try and catch over that amount of feed. If there's lots of fish coming back in, I don't need to keep piling the bait in. I can just kinder pot. As long as there's enough bait in your peg, the fish will keep coming back to it. When all your bites stop, all the activity stops, you're not catching no longer, that's when you've got to feed more to draw them back in. So I'm gonna start down there. Obviously we've fished maggots today. Like I say, some venues, you can substitute it for corn, meat, you know, whatever's working at that particular venue. So on here now I'm going to put sort of five dead maggots all through the fin bit. I've got five on the up there, so I've got a nice target bait. Once I've caught this fish, or, you know, hopefully caught this fish, once we've caught one, then we can start thinking about potentially kindering every chuck. F1s, they like little and often, so kindering is brilliant for F1s, but with big carp, sometimes you need that volume of bait to draw them into your peg. So let's see what happens. We might go in and catch an F1. Like I said, this carp fishing generally gets better once they've spawned. So later on in the year, once the lakes have warmed through properly, you know, July, August, September, they're always the best time of year for carp. That's when this fishing right in against the bank tactic will work at its best. This time of the year, early spring, going into summer, sometimes you've just got to fish that little bit deeper, slightly off the bank a little bit. But for the real big fish, if you can, you always want to try and target them in the shallowest water you can get into. So I've fed my bait. I'll leave it there now. Like I say, I'll probably give it three, four minutes, something like that. If I've not had one, I need to start thinking about feeding again. If nothing's been into my peg, I won't need to go and put another massive pot in. I can just go in and try and kinder a bit, just a little bit of bait, just to try and tease them back in. But if I'm getting no signs whatsoever, big pot it and try and wait until the fish arrive. You know, if you're fishing a match or anything like that, sometimes they might not arrive until the last hour, two hours of your match. So you'd be building this line up throughout the day. So we've just hooked our first fish in that shallow water. Give me a little run around here. Come on. Feels a much better stamp fish than what we was catching in that slightly shallower bit. You can see the colour starting to kick up as well now. The fish, the ground bait and the bottom is starting to cloud up. That's going to give fish confidence. That's the beauty of ground bait is when you do hook a fish, you're naturally bringing other fish back into your peg because of the cloud. So we had to wait about, probably getting on three, four minutes for that bite. But the stamp is probably gonna be our biggest fish of the day, this. It might even be a massive F1. No, it is a carp, it's a smaller carp, little common. Little for the size of the carp in here, but still bigger than all them F1s I've had. I'll just try and hold him up for you so you can see. 
Now, if the carp are not feeding, I would quite happily drop back down that shelf. As you can see there, probably four and a half near five pound. Worth waiting for. Probably worth the equivalent of two or three of them F1s that we was catching down the slope. Now, that's the decision I'd have to make today. If I was fishing this particular lake, am I catching the F1s a lot quicker down the slope where it's sort of two foot? Am I better off sitting in this shallow water trying to target the carp? What I've got to work out now is how do I carry on feeding for them carp? If I've made the decision, right, I need to catch up in a match or whatever situation it is, you know, I'm not catching many F1s, so I might as well feed for the carp. What I could do now, potentially, is go back up, go back in and repeat that process. So I might put some maggots in my pot. You don't have to fill it half full every single time, but what I might decide to do is go half a pot of maggots again, because that worked last time. Cap it with ground bait. Now I'm feeding 100 mil. It might take 100 mil to get them carp back in. If, what I've noticed over the years is when you just start kinder potting, if you're not feeding enough bait, if you're just kinder potting, say, the large, the large kinder pot that is, what you tend to find is your peg will go back to F1s. And because you're fishing in that shallow water, it won't be as quick as fishing in that two foot. So when you are tar targeting them carp, try and make sure that you feed enough bait to hold them. If you're fishing for the F1s, don't feed too much bait because you will put them off. If you was F1 fishing, you couldn't go and give them one of these every single chuck. And this is where you can sometimes potentially get through up to two kilos of ground bait in a match. You need to make sure that you're feeding the fish. One to hold them, one to feed them and draw them into your peg. So what I'm gonna do, put another pot of that back in there, see if we can potentially drag another carp into our peg. This is what I'd be thinking in my head. I'd be going, right, there's my marker. Put my bait in. I'd repeat the process. I'd go back in with a bunch of maggots on the hook, try and catch another carp. If I feel like, right, the carp are there all the time and getting bites quick, you don't want to put too much bait into your peg. Sometimes go back in and just kinder pot. You might get two or three fish on that before it starts to quieten down. You start waiting five, six minutes for a bite. Then you can go and put another big pot in. Some days, 100 mil is not enough. You might go and the fish are really big. They're cleaning your peg out straight away. The beauty of ground bait is it doesn't fill the fish up. It attracts them, but there's nothing really in it to fill them up and feed, overfeed them. So don't be scared of putting 100, 200, 300 mil of ground bait in when you're carp fishing. They'll come in, you'll waft your bait about. If you start getting lots of fish in your peg, then obviously they're there. You don't need to attract them. Go to a smaller pot, try and focus them down, and then just try and catch them on that.